This should not be. New York City will be under a curfew that begins in three seconds. Some of the most prominent streets, anything but quiet tonight, with more peaceful protests, but also more looting. <laughs> Hundreds of people swarm the front of the closed Walmart, shattering the glass doors and forcing their way inside. We believe at least 200 storm into the Walmart. Many have their faces covered. Others are clearly smiling as they rush inside the store and start looting and causing damage. In twerking on the top of an ambulance in Lake Merritt in Oakland, California on Saturday night, as paramedics attempted to make their way through to the scene of a shooting in which one person was killed and at least seven others were wounded. As the ambulance arrived at the scene, the revelers continued to party, with no apparent regard for the seriousness of the situation that just occurred nearby. Now, as much as I'm upset to see this, I know that the problem is not with the world, it's with the church. And the problem is, is that the church has fallen for the sweet, deceptive words of the adulterous woman. Now, in the book of Proverbs, all throughout Proverbs, God is talking about the adulterous woman. He's not talking about people that are having sex outside of marriage. That's not his number one focus. What he's saying is, attend to my words, listen to what I have to say, because this woman is a spirit and she speaks sweetly, but her words lead you to the slaughter. This is what has happened within the church. We have adopted the language of the world and now we see the fruit of that. So let's look back and see where it started. There was a wrong that took place in America, which wasn't exclusive only to America, slavery. And when that wrong was made right, sin crept in and perverted it like it does everything. And it was like, oh, <laughs> you want them to be free? Hold my beer. And came out with all of this nonsense about how white people are just white supremacists and they're oppressors and black people are just victims. And because of that, we are okay with behavior like this. White people are racist. So <laughs> I put this up because I really want any white person in the room to know up front that this is what we're dealing with, that it's not gonna be this coddling of white tears. White tears? And what that looks like, we're not gonna discuss, oh, maybe some of us have worked it out. No, you're always gonna be racist, actually. So even when you're on your path to trying to figure out how to be a better human being, um, because I believe that white people are born into not being human. Oh, you're not you are racist. Your sticker is racist because police, that's a job. You can choose to be a police. I, didn't, I don't choose to be black. Okay? No, you can choose to be a cop. You can choose to kill people with a badge and you're protecting that shit, which means that you're racist. I know, I know, but this offends us automatically because these people kill people like me and like us, right? So you're promoting our murderers. So please now, if you were to go back and change all the verbiage from white to black, people would be outraged. <laughs> to tell people, black people, that they are just evil and they're not even human. And I know somebody's going to be like, they did say that about us. No, they didn't. It's written in the Constitution. No, it's not. <laughs> no, it's not. Uh, I would love to get into it, but we'll do that for another video. But I have found on leaders, these are leaders, people that are leading many of people that have huge platforms that have bought into this rhetoric and they have brought it into the church. And now you have the body of Christ separated and divided. I'm a black Christian. I'm a white Christian. Is there such a thing? Nowhere in the word of God does it break up the people based off of what they are in their earth suit. Even back then, when Paul was writing his letters, he didn't say to the Gentile church in Galatia or the Gentile church in Corinth. He says to the church in Corinth, to the church in Galatia. There is no division. And throughout his letters, you hear him calling for unity, unity in the spirit and unity in the faith. This whole black white thing does not exist in the body of Christ. 
you have Christians that are black that will defend criminals because of the color of their skin. As soon as anything comes out where something was done to a black person, immediately they want to say, oh my goodness, here we go again. Black bodies in the street. They go on and on and on and on and on. And then you have other Christians that are white that are apologizing for white people. And it's absolutely ridiculous. Even in the word of God, it says, be quick to listen and slow to speak. But I don't really find that when it comes to believers. As soon as they hear a story, they, they go on social media and they're ranting about racism and slavery all over again. But then when, when more information comes out, come to find out these people are criminals. You guys are defending criminals and the kingdom of darkness because of someone's skin color? Like that's what we've come to? It should be no surprise that lawbreakers are met with law enforcement. If you resist arrest, it may not always go well for you. Let me give you a couple of scriptures. Proverbs 22, verse 8. He who sows wickedness reaps trouble. Proverbs 29, verse 6. An evil man is snared by his own sin. You find this repeatedly in the word of God. It has nothing to do with skin color. If you have a history and a pattern for being a lawbreaker and breaking the law, more than likely you will be met with law enforcement. And a lot of the mindset of these people is, I ain't going to jail. <laughs> so they resist arrest or they don't want them finding out what it is that they have or they have warrants or whatever the case may be. And then it goes from bad to worse. And all of this could have been avoided had they simply complied. But because of the color of their skin, you have Christians that will come out and defend this nonsense and make it a race issue when it's not. And this was another thing that got me during the uh, Kyle Rittenhouse case, because I watched it. And it was disgusting to see after the verdict, how Christians were coming out and they were disappointed and upset. There was one comment where the lady said, I didn't even watch the trial, but I was disturbed yet it was to be expected. So I'm thinking, you didn't watch the trial, but you were willing for this young man to be guilty because he's white? How is that God? That you don't care enough to even do the research to have righteous judgment, but because the color of his skin doesn't have enough melanin in it, we want him to be guilty. You have the body of Christ defending criminals based on melanin, and you have the body of Christ for the lack of melanin, not wanting to speak up lest they be called a racist. So you're telling me that you're afraid of persecution? That That's why you won't speak up? That's why you won't shun evil and cling to good? We're doing this based off of melanin? And you see how this line of thinking even affects the way that we select our leaders. We're not looking at policies or people, whether they love righteousness and love our God. We're looking at whether they have a D or an R behind their name. And if we're not doing that at all, we don't care enough to know what's going on in our government. So we put people in place that don't love righteousness, don't love truth, and don't love our God, and then wonder why it looks the way that it does. With a church on every corner throughout America, it shouldn't look like this. The problem ain't the world, it's the church. And until this gets made right within the body, it won't be made right within the world. So let me bring you over to Second Chronicles chapter 7, verse 14. If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves, pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and I will heal their land. He's not talking to the world. He's talking to his church. So if we want to see change, we've got to stop adopting the language of the world and get it out of the church. We are one body joined by one spirit and we must be unified. When we see it here, it'll blossom everywhere else. I know that you've been blessed in your hearing, and as always, family, grace and peace.